Many clinicians ask, what is the QEEG pattern for TBI? My response is that there is no one pattern because TBI can be mild or severe and have differential short-term and long-term consequences from a neurophysiological perspective. Immediate effects are usually generalized slowing of the EEG with increased delta and theta amplitude, especially in the temporal lobes, typically with a posterior alpha deficit. Increased frontal and temporal coherence is also typical. Within 24 hours, these effects may resolve or continue for months. These EEG abnormalities usually resolve after three months, with 90% resolving within a year. In contrast to these typically reported findings, a large percentage of long-standing TBI cases from hundreds of our clinics show low delta amplitudes. Comorbidities can make QEG patterns even more varied and complex. This is a typical trauma map showing long-standing effects of a TBI. This client fell and hit their head while inebriated. The map was recorded several years after the trauma. Note the diffuse low delta, typical of dopamine deficits as reported in Alper et al, and critical losses of white matter. Diffuse elevated theta is correlated with underlying white matter damage, according to Kenyazov. Beta deficits are usually an indicator of neurotransmitter deficits, and difficulty with mitochondrial support of sodium pump activity necessary to generate high frequency activity. Slowing of the dominant alpha frequency is also frequently an indicator of unresolved TBI. This Loretta image of the same map shows the locations of the delta deficits, especially in the frontal region, where it is typically most commonly present and critical to cognitive functions. In the connectivity head maps of the same case, note the frontal hypercoherence in red in the theta frequencies and typical of reports in TBI. In this case, we also have strong alpha and beta asymmetries associated with anxiety and depression. The low scores in the new mind metabolic checklist provides us with further verification that the alpha slowing does not have its source in metabolic problems such as hypothyroid as reported in Niedermeyer. After 30 sessions of neurofeedback using two-channel bilateral targeting training generated from the new mind analysis system, the pre-post map shows a 36% change with respect to all dimensions of analysis. Although reorganization continues at a 40% rate, the dominant change is toward the statistical norm of the database, in this case, NeuroGuide. TOVA score changes are also significant. As you can see here, TOVA scores have changed from minus 8.7 to an almost normal minus 3.4. Variability has decreased, response time increased, and errors of omission have decreased. The reduction in theta noted is by almost two standard deviations to an approximately normal level. Here is a pre-post subconcussive TBI. The client had already had a concussion from an auto accident nine months prior. The post map was taken the next day after the event which involved the blow to the posterior region. Changes in magnitude are minor but overall changes in coherence, phase, dominant frequency, and asymmetry result in a 28% change in brainwave distribution. So, even subconcussive events can have significant impact. In this slide, we can see the more considerable change in the coherence features of the same map, especially posterior hypercoherence related to the site of the trauma. The left and right hemisphere can be seen increasing cooperation to compensate for losses.